What's up, Cal Gang? All right, this is probably one of my favorite setup problems. Um, so we're driving in a plane. Vroom, vroom, we're going uh, 55 degrees upward. That's pretty steep. And we're going 75 meters a second. And we want to drop a hay bale so you get launched over this cool arc and land right on top of a cow so we can feed it. Um, and it's asking us, you know, how far away from the cow should we be in order for us to, uh, you know, hit the cow directly, basically. Okay. So let's do this. This is some vectors, some cool stuff. Okay, so before we do any calculations, we're gonna do some calculations. Let's do some more calculations. All right, so let's set up a triangle, basically, for what we got going on here, because this is kind of a vector problem mixed in with a free fall problem. It's everything all at once. Okay, so let's look at our plane. So our plane is going this direction. This is 55 degrees, right? And it's going 75 meters a second. So we can set up a triangle now, like this. Boom, and using Sokotoa, sine, cosine, tangent, we can find out what these two angles are. And basically the approach that I'm taking to solve this problem is we wanna find out its vertical component, right? Because we know how far it is above the ground, and if we can know its vertical speed component, we can kind of find out, basically, it's gonna go up, it's gonna stop, it's gonna fall back down, and it's gonna fall 180 meters, and then it's going to hit the ground. And we want to find out how long it takes for that whole sequence to happen, because then we can find the time it takes from release to the ground, and then we can use that to find out how far away it is, or um, how far away it needs to be. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's use sine, cosine, tangent. So what we know about this is that um, sine is equal to opposite over adjacent. So let's mark this as B, and let's mark this as A. So sine of 55. 55 is equal to B divided by 75. Now we're trying to find out what B is. So we can do here is multiply both sides of 75. 75 sine of 55 is equal to B. And, oh wait, not, okay, it's equal to B. All right, then we plug this into our calculator. 75 sine of 55. And we get B is equal to 61.4-ish, you know. So let's write that 61.4. All right, that's all we need right now. So what is this telling us, you know? What do we know about this 61.4? That's its velocity upward at times equal to zero. So let's break this down. Let's start with just our vertical component. Let's try to do that and figure out at what time it hits the ground. So we're gonna use our uh, kinematics equation for uh, distance. So distance is a, uh, is a function of time. Uh, is equal to, actually let's set this as y because it's vertical. So it's uh, one half velocity, or one half acceleration times t squared. Our acceleration, because we're on Earth, is 9.8. So half of one, or half of 9.8, negative 4.905 t squared. If you don't know this kinematics equation, you should learn it. Um, it's on my other videos, or just Google it. Uh, plus initial velocity, so our initial velocity is b, which is 61.4 times time, plus our initial position, 180. Now what we're looking for here is when is our position equal to zero? At what point does it go up and then come back down and this is zero at our cow? So we wanna know when it hits zero. So to do that, let's just set our position equal to zero. This is our position, it's equal to zero. So negative 4.905 t squared plus 6.14 t plus 180. We have to plug this into, um, what's the name of that equation? Uh, you know, the negative b plus or minus square root of b squared over uh, plus 4ac. Quadratic equation? Yeah, that's the one. I totally blanked on the name. Okay. Do I have to? Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to do this, I guess. So t is equal to negative b. Let's just put this as b because it's equal to b. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, this is b, I'm just gonna say this, this is b, minus four times uh, 4.905, 180, all over 2a, so negative 9.81. Okay, and then if you plug this in, where's my thing? It is, what do we get? We're gonna get two values, one of them's gonna be negative probably, and uh, yeah, one of them is gonna be negative, but it's like, I guess it'd be kind of like a match if it went negative time, you know? But we don't worry about that. We're worrying about the positive one, obviously, because we're looking forward in time. 
So t is equal to, all right, that's our time. That's how long it takes from release till it hits the cows. So perfect, that's what we needed. Now we can go ahead with this value and use it to find our vertical distance in that time, right? Okay, so what's our vertical distance? So we're gonna need A for this, right? Um, okay, so A, what do we know about A? Well, A is, um, so if you know cosine of 55 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's A over 75. Once again, multiplying 75 uh, cosine of 55. I'm having a panic attack, making sure I did everything right. Um, 61, yeah, 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 okay. And that's equal to A. So if we do the math on this, 75 cosine of 55, A is equal to 43.0, basically. Keep it good enough. Okay, um, I'm gonna erase this for a second. I need this right now. We do need the time, though. That's what we look for. Okay, so we know what A is equal to. So let's find our um, kinematics equation for position, but in the x direction instead of the y direction. So x of t is equal to one half the acceleration. What's our acceleration? Uh, we actually don't have an acceleration because we're not using gravity because we're going forward or backwards. And the hay bale is not accelerating. It doesn't have you know, a jet or anything on it. Okay, so acceleration is zero. Plus initial velocity. So our initial velocity is gonna be this, right? So 43 t, and then our initial position, well, it's zero, right? Let's just say that this is zero and then 180. So this is zero for x. So this is all we have here. So what we want to find out is when we plug in this t value, what's our position going to be? How far are we going to go in this much time? So x, so 14.98, uh, this is just saying we're plugging in 14.98 to this value of t. And that's going to be equal to, uh, multiply this, times 43, oh no, by 14.98, uh, or eight, 644 point, uh, yeah, just four is good. Okay, and yeah, that's 644 meters, and that's what the question's asking for, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold up, I missed a point somewhere. I probably rounded a little wrong, but this is probably the right answer too. Uh, the right answer in my book is 645, 644.4. I was just down by a little bit probably. Maybe I needed to round more on the time value. Either way, uh, okay, so this is it, right? This is how far it goes in that much time. Uh, how far in front of the county? Yeah, perfect, okay, there you go. That's how you have the answer. All right, so yeah, that's all the steps you need to solve this problem. This is a pretty fun problem actually, because you're using a little bit of everything. You're using vectors, you're using geometry, using um, you know, free fall ideas, finding time, and uh, yeah. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Uh, stick around if it was. Uh, if it wasn't helpful, dislike the video and uh, go somewhere else. You know, I don't know, do what you wanna do. But uh, yeah, see you guys next time.